the joint as a product of conditionals. In graphical models, we often have to deal with large numbers of variables. That can be quite costly in terms of, of memory if you don't take, take advantage of uh, factorization into conditionals. So down here you see a probability in five variables, A, B, C, D. If we assume that each variable can assume 10 different values, it's easy to calculate that there are 100,000 possible values, probability values, that we would have to store in order to represent this joint probability. Right? It's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 values. However, if we know something about the statistical relationships between the variables, and we can write it as a product of conditionals, let's say p of c given b e times p of e given d b times p of d times p of b given a times p of a. Then we can save a lot of memory by representing these factors rather than uh, the whole joint probability distribution. So for those functions here that have just one variable, like p of a, we would need to store 10 values, and for those with two values, um, two variables, we would have to store 100 values, and for those with three variables, we would have to store 1000 values. So the storage requirement in this representation would be 2120, as compared to 100,000 for the full joint probability distribution. So that's just 2% of that one here. Of course, we need a statistical structure like this one given here. So, and this uh, probability distribution here is constrained compared to this one. It's completely free, um, well, this is constrained, constrained to the structure. But very often that is the case because of causal relationships, right? So if C depends on B and E, but not on A and not on D, then we can write uh, such a conditional here. Yeah, here just a reminder that even though we can use causal relationships to come up with such a joint probability distribution, Bayesian th formalism is not about causality, right? So with um, Bayes' rule, we could swap some of these variables and come up with a different uh, representation which has not, is not related to the causality, which does not reflect the causality. Another remark here is that there may not be um, sort of loops in the sense that like given here, P of A given C, P of C given B, P of B given A. That does not work. Yeah. Okay, so this is, if you just consider the representation of the probabilities, but also if you want to calculate uh, and derive things uh, for such high dimensional data, so or data with so many random variables, uh, it's quite efficient to have this factorization. So let's consider marginalization. So if you want to calculate, sorry, if you want to calculate uh, P of E, you simply have to marginalize over all the other variables, A, B, C, D. So formally this is very simple. However, since A, B, C, and D go over 10 different variables, um, we have to calculate almost 10,000 uh, additions. One less because, right, if you add three terms, you have two additions. Um, if we now replace our joint probability distribution by the product of uh, conditionals, we not only get our 9,999 summations, we also get 40,000 multiplications, right? Because in order to calculate one of these terms, we need one, two, three, four multiplications. So this sounds like 
not a good idea. However, since some of these terms do not depend on all these variables, actually none of these terms depends on all these variables, we can shuffle the 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 sums around. Yeah? For instance, we can move the sum over C just to this term, because nothing else depends on C. So we have this term here. We can move the sum over D to these two terms, which depend on D. All the other terms do not depend on D, and the sum over A to this term here. In addition, we can use the normalization condition, because we know if we sum over C, and uh, we don't have partial evidence for C, or so really all values are possible, then this sum equals to 1. So we get rid of this term altogether. Um, this sum requires, because d goes over 10 values, requires 10 multiplications and 9 additions to calculate this for any value of e and b. This again requires 10 multiplications and 9 additions for any value of a. So we have 10 times this term, 100 times this term, this drops out. Um, yeah, and if we add this all together, we end up with 210 multiplications and 189 additions. Now this is much, much less effort than doing this thing here. Yeah. So it's not only that we save memory, we also save computation by representing the joint probability distributions as a product of my, um, conditionals. One more way to uh, increase efficiency here is that if you want to calculate this for different random variables, like we have just calculated this for p of e, but we could also be interested in p of b or, or c or so, then some of these terms might actually reappear. Yeah? And then one could store these and reuse them. And that's the whole idea of, of graphical models to make this factorization and the reusage of intermediate results transparent and sort of manageable in a graphical way.